1200 Films Podcast. All horror, all the time. Chuck Loaf here, your hostess with the mostess. Again, trying to cover as many 2019 movies as possible so I can give you a complete year in review of the best and the worst. If you want to talk about the worst, you need to go back to the previous episode and watch my reviews on the Child's Play and High Life films, which, uh... You ever watch a good film and you think, boy, it's going to be a long time since until I see something this good? That's how I kind of felt in reverse with Child's Play. I thought, wow, there's nothing I'm going to see any time this near future that's this bad. And then the next film I watched was High Life with Robert Pattinson. I thought, wow. It's even worse. It's like me in a car wreck. And like, well, my car flipped over six times, but at least I only broke my leg. And then another car comes out of nowhere and hits you again. Like, well, now I broke my arm and my pelvis. That's how I felt watching those two films. Broken arm, broken leg, broken pelvis. But, uh... In this batch, we got not one, but two films, according to Rotten Tomatoes, are at 100%. Hmm. And then one movie with 10%. And then one film <laughs> with the biggest gap I've ever seen between a critic rating and an audience score. And actually, that will be our first film covered here. 1989. We got three films from the 80s. Four from 2019. For 1989, we got Brain Dead. The biggest gap I've ever seen. Critic rating 17%, audience score of 70. That's over 50%. You know which film had the previous biggest gap I've ever seen? High Life. Critic rating of 83%, audience score of 42. This this surpassed that. Brain dead. Bill Paxton, Bill Pullman. I thought, how could I go wrong? I was wrong. If I had watched this at the time it came out, it probably would have been fine. But I've seen so many movies with so many twists and turns, and I could see this one coming. 73.6 miles away, and it kind of ruined it. This doctor is trying to manipulate people it's a good doctor but he's trying to help people kitty shut your mouth he's trying to help people by manipulating their brain by going into there and messing with things and then he ends up going crazy so he needs his brain manipulated and it's it's been done but um i i, I can't quite recommend this even for fans of the 80s uh, next, we go on to 2019's Something. That is the title. Something. Critic rating of 40% audience score of 67. I was looking up, trying to find an old Eric Roberts movie called Ambulance, which doesn't seem to exist anywhere, but on YouTube. I don't really want to watch the YouTube version, but it looks like I don't have a choice, and I found... Eric Roberts did a 2019 horror film called Something. I said, well, it's 2019 and it's horror. I should probably check it out. Well, he's in it for about 92 seconds. But, um, and boy, the first 20 minutes of this film are real testers, folks. <laughs> the first 15 minutes, it's this couple, and they have a newborn baby. And the first 15 minutes of this film is them deciding whether or not to move the baby crib out of the bedroom. And then they decide, yeah, we're going to move the baby crib out of the bedroom. And then the next five minutes is them actually moving the baby crib out of the bedroom. Of course, the baby crib was too big to get out of the doorway, so they had to take it apart. So that was a whole montage right there of... The dude taking the crib apart and putting it in another room. And then all these strange things started to happen around the house. Like, things would be moved. And sometimes the baby would get moved. Sometimes the baby would be outside, just outside the door. And like, So the, the couple started turning on each other. Like, why are you doing this? I didn't do this. I, no, you must have done this because I didn't do this. 
And this keeps spiraling, spiraling, spiraling. The ending kind of was a thud. The middle was fine when things were spiraling, spiraling. But the, the beginning and the end was real something. It was something for something. But uh, I guess if it's okay if desperate. That's, that's all I can give that. Then we got a big budget one. We got 2019. We got Glass. Samuel L. Jackson, Bruce Willis, James McElroy. This got a critic rating of 37%. Audience score of 69%. I thought it was better than Split, but not as good as Unbreakable. But it was fun. It was fine to watch. The, all the, the all three are kind of finally brought together. I was wondering if Samuel L. Jackson was ever going to speak in this film. He just kind of sat in a wheelchair for the first hour. I was like, what, what is... Is he getting paid for this? What is he doing? Why is he here? But it finally comes around. Uh, good action. Very violent at times. But um, yes, I would say put on the watch list. Nice film. Then we go back to the 80s. Sadly, back to 1989 to Dead Pit. There's no critic rating for this. An audience score of 41%. I did a film, covered a film called Mutant in the last episode. This is the same. It's zombies coming up and needing to be eradicated. In this one, this doctor's doing experiments on people underground in the basement. And then this chick escapes and blocks it off. So they kind of just dwelled underground for around 20, 30 years. And then finally they break free and... The doctor and these patients start causing havoc. Yeah. Can't quite recommend that either. That was real stinker. That was not great. Not quite dumpster fire garbage, but just not good. And then we go all the way back to 2019 with Brightburn. I was hesitant on this film because of the superhero aspect, but it's not really a superhero film. Critic rating, 57%. Audience score, 67 I thought those would both be a little higher. I thought this was a well-made little piece of work. This kid who, has, who comes to the planet just like Superman, but he turns out to be a douche, even though... Even though he's a douche, I think his parents might have been... Just as big or bigger douches, my opinion. But anyway, this was, I didn't expect a, like a true horror film out of this. And that's what I got. This movie was dark and violent. It's like, yes. And uh, the kid was played by Jackson A. Dunn. And I don't usually care who stars in it, especially if it's nobody's. But this kid was really good compared to the next movie where the kid was really bad but um i would definitely put this on the watch list excellent film this will probably be in discussion somewhere ranked in the top 10 for best films of the year i'm guessing but we'll get to that when we get to it uh the next one 2016 unspoken critic rating of 10 percent audience score of 34 this house has all this dark activity going on it and families end up dead and so it sits abandoned for 20 some years and then this family finally moves back in and guess what things pick up but it goes in some weird directions there's this this, this mom and this boy move in and this boy has some issues and he's uh, got some problem He's played by Sonny Soljic. I think that's how you say it. Who is by far the worst child actor I have ever seen. This kid looked like he was working on about two hours sleep. After being body slammed onto barbed wire. He looked completely miserable. Looked completely disinterested. 
It's like he just wanted to play his Xbox and be left alone. So uh, eventually you figure out the, the, the deal with the mother and the child. and Oh boy, unspoken, not good. Uh, again, can't quite recommend that one. Can't quite recommend. 1988, we got Paper House. What pulled me to this one was the critic rating of 100%. Audience score of 71. Don't know how this got 100. It wasn't bad, but it also was nothing special. This kid, it's a girl who looks like a boy, which is fine. She would draw things and then she would like fall asleep or go into this comatose state and then she would be in her drawings. So, kitty, get out of here. So she would um, drew this house, right? So she would be in this house, and then she drew this boy in the window. Then there would be the boy in the window, but he couldn't walk because he didn't have legs. So she drew him some legs so he could walk. And then her uh, her, her dreams and her comatose state that she goes into starts lasting longer and longer. So she's kind of stuck there. And then eventually her her father, who's not really mentioned up until this point, who apparently is a bad guy, has his eyes plucked out and is at trying to attack the daughter. Those scenes were a little intense, but beyond that, this film was just nothing much. I'd say, okay, if desperate, it's different. I'll give it that. It's different. It's unique, especially for... What, 1988? Gosh. But nothing overly wonderful. Uh, then we go to our fantastically feature review of Haunt. This cannot be We got 2019's Haunt, critic rating 69%, audience score 100%. I thought, huh. And it kind of worried me that it was a haunted house film, and after seeing The House is October Built 2, which was complete garbage, I was a little wary of watching another haunted, you know, not, not like a ghost in the house, but like one you pay to go visit during Halloween and people jump out from behind doors and say, booga, 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 booga. And those haunted houses, that's what this is. But you know what? This was really good. This film was excellent. And again, it's available on Shudder. And with the promo code HMP, you can get a free month and watch this for free. It starts like most with the college being full of college kids driving around looking for a haunted house and they just see this random sign in the middle of nowhere say oh that's just let's go there it says haunted house so they go there when you're the only car in the parking lot red flag red flag and when you can get in without paying a red flag so they go in, and that's where the, all the craziness starts. And boy, the... <laughs> There's a lot of things being chopped off, and stuff being gouged, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Boy, the freaks in this fucking... I mean, excuse me, the freaks in this place are a little out of control. But um, yes, put on top of the watch list, watch this immediately. This film was excellent. This will also definitely be in this discussion for top 2019 horror film. 
I almost put Brightburn as my feature review this month, but Haunt was a little haunt. Haunt was a little better. But um, so yeah, going on to next week, we got a bunch of Netflix films. We got Fractured in the Tall Grass, Ellie, and AMI. Uh, then we got a couple more some Shutter movies with my free Shutter package. We got Billsy Booth, which has Tobin Bell from Saw, so I'm looking forward to that. Hell House LLC three. First one was good. Second one was okay. We'll see what the third can deliver. And then uh, an eighties film called Birthday Bash. And then we got a film that I have been trying to find for a long time. I finally got it. Finally found a copy on, on Amazon. It came all the way from Southern California via a thrift store. And I got it for two bucks. <laughs> if they knew how hard I've been trying to find this film, they would charge a lot more than two bucks. Storm Warning is an Australian horror film. I love Australian horror films for some reason. The, 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 the loved ones, the tunnel, the rover, the Wolf Creek films, the shallows, boar, all great. And who can forget? <laughs> Dead end drive in. Oh my gosh, great film there. A lot of great stuff coming from Australia. So I'm looking forward to this one because it kind of fits under that mold. And it got a lot of good reviews. So I finally got a hold of it. So I will be reviewing that. I'll probably be watching it as soon as I finish up this. So, uh, yeah, looking forward to that as per usual. So uh, I guess I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs>